Hey guys, it's Kaylee. I am back with another What's Hold from last week video and oh my gosh, we had a record breaking week. I'm not kidding. I think it's like over a thousand dollars what my last record was. It's hard to say. I was thinking about this and talking to uh, the girls here at the office about it because we do like sales reporting every single Monday for part of our meeting. And I used to calculate what we also received in funds for shipping, but now I'm just calculating the item sales. Uh, but with everything involved, nonetheless, it is definitely a record-breaking week. Um, I did closet clear out uh, for my like beginning of the month sale that I always run on anything at 90 days or older. And that really drove um, a lot of the Poshmark sales, which I think definitely impacted um, this week's sales. And I honestly don't know why this closet clear out in particular was so successful because I still sold a lot of um, higher price stuff even in that closet clear out dropout sale. And then I also had really great sales on eBay too. So I think things are just picking up, um, but it is worth noting that that closet clear out was definitely super duper successful. Um, I get a lot of questions about closet clear out, kind of how we do it and how I drop prices every single month on my older items. Um, I have a video to that and so I will link that down below in the description box. If you are interested in seeing that video, I talk about how I use Posture VA uh, to participate in closet clear out. It's just like a couple of clicks. It is super easy, super simple, totally worth the money because not only uh, do you pay $25 to use it you know, for closet clear out, but also it can share, it can send out offers after like so many minutes of watching. And that's where a lot of my sales come from on Poshmark. For the most part, it's pretty automated. I just use this perfectly to cross post things over. Um, it doesn't cost anything to list on Poshmark uh, for me. So yeah, between list perfectly um, and Posher VA, for the most part, everything's pretty much automated. It's so easy to take my items from eBay over to Poshmark, just a few clicks, and it takes me 30 seconds or less uh, per item. So it's just like an extra bonus, and this week it, it definitely paid off. But that's enough talking. Let's dive in to this What Sold video. Okay, so like I said, best week ever. Everything that you see here on this report happened between September 10th through the 16th. That is a Sunday through Saturday. And that is how myself and these platforms calculate their weeks. And that's just the easiest way for me to do it because I can just pull the information right from those reports and plug it into my own. So total items sold was 306 items good split between eBay and Poshmark. Like I said, I did run a closet clear out, so I sold a ton of stuff on Poshmark, actually more than on eBay. So on eBay, I sold 121 items. On Poshmark, I sold 185. And then as far as sales go, um, gross sales on eBay, gross item sales, were $3,848 on eBay. And then on Poshmark, they were actually just over 4,500. So Poshmark definitely beat eBay as far as sales go, um, but I did sell a lot of lower price items to get there through Closet Clearout. That just continues to be a very successful strategy for me, um, and I do it about once a month on the Closet Clearout days, usually towards the beginning of the month. So very excited about that. My gross item sales, which does not include what I receive for shipping through eBay, was $8,437.23. That is like blowing the goal completely out of the water. So I'm super happy with that. And that made my average item sale price $27.57. I still can't seem to budge on being around $28. I'm hoping to get between uh, 35 and 40 again used to be where I was at before I hired employees um, and hoping to get back to that by the end of the year. And I, I definitely think that we will. Um, obviously, anytime I do closet clear out, it decreases the average sale price for that week. But I still think $28 is pretty good given that I did a closet clear out. So let's jump in to the sales. I'm going to start with eBay and finish with Poshmark. And I'll try to go pretty fast here. 
So first one is the brand Outlier. This is a newer brand to me and it is one of my favorites now. They're kind of, um, from what I can tell, an outdoorsy kind of brand. They make very like capsule wardrobe basics, but they're very high quality. Um, this says it's made with Japanese fabric and this one was a linen blend, which I think help to increase the value significantly. You guys can see their logo right here. And I think that their branding is like kind of hidden on the inside of the pants. So you got to dig a little bit to be able to see it. Uh, but I would definitely keep your eye out for outlier. As you can see, these look pretty plain, but they sold for quite a bit of money. So Keep your eye out for this. I got this one through Trash Pandas Wholesale. Um, I actually paid up for this. I paid $15 and it sold for my full asking price of $95. Very, very good sale. Next up is another higher price sale. This is a vintage item. It is Roberto Cavalli. And this is a pretty good brand to be on the lookout for as far as vintage goes. I think it does depend on the piece, just like you know, pretty much every vintage item. Um, but this beachwear line combined with this animal print dress seemed to be really, really good. And I was surprised at how quickly this sold as well. Um, I also paid up for this through Trash Pandas Wholesale. I paid $15 for this one also, and it sold for my full asking price of $80. And yeah, very Y2K-S. I think that that is an amazing sale. Next up is a brand I just learned about called Astral, and I don't know much about this brand other than they appear to be kind of like a, a barefoot kind of brand, if you know what I mean. Um, they just have that look to them, and very simple, kind of lightweight, but I did do comps, and I was very pleasantly surprised at the comps on this brand. So this one is a pair of men's the brand was, or sorry, the style was called Loak M's. I don't know much about this brand yet, um, but they were a size 10, pretty decent size in men's. Um, and I only paid six bucks for them, listed them for $65. They sold on an offer to watchers for around $55. Um, and this one had a really great sell through rate. Next up is something I've talked about for the past few videos. They are Toad & Co. Wide Leg Pants. Still continuing to perform pretty well on these. These are a size small, um, and they did have a couple spots. I listed them for $60, and they ended up selling on an offer to Watcher pretty quickly for $51. And the keyword here being the Chaka uh, Wide Leg Pants. This is the style name for these, and I believe, yes, it says it on the inside tag. So keep your eye out for the Chaka wide leg pants. They sell very, very quickly for me um, and for really good money. Next up is a pair of Spanx. This is a brand I really love picking up, but I have noticed a decline depending on the style on sell through rate and also how much they'll sell for. This one appeared to be a pretty um, more substantial style. They were very thick uh, joggers, pair of jogger pants. And I looked up the style name, which I've been doing now with Spanx, just because it really does seem to make a difference um, in comps and what you're going to price the item for. And I don't want to leave money on the table. So these are called the Air Essentials Tapered Joggers. And I listed them for $60. Only paid five bucks for them. They did sell for my full asking price. Next up is a brand I love picking up in fall and winter. It performs well for me every year. It is Geiger. They're made in Austria and they um, are pretty well known for their boiled wool items. So this is a 100% wool piece. I don't know if you can tell from the fabric. I guess I come here. This is boiled wool. <clears throat> and it's definitely a good keyword to use. So you can see we used it in the title here. Um, this brand can bring really, really great money depending on what you have. I've, um, I think I've gotten... Probably the most I've ever gotten for it was like $80 to $90, um, but you know, all in all, really good ASP on this brand. It tends to only sell during the winter, but you know, one to be on the lookout for. So paid five bucks for this. We listed it for 60 and it did sell for our full asking price. Next up is a Western brand that I just learned about. It is called True, Rest, True West Rock Mount Rock. 
which where gosh that is a tongue twister um so they're made in the usa in denver colorado and you can see it's all over westerny um pearl snap buttons and pretty much anytime i see a completely western shirt and i can tell that the brand is tailored to western wear i just always look it up because those brands tend to perform well Paid two dollars for this guy. We listed it for fifty, and it sold pretty quickly for our full asking price. Next up is a designer brand that performs really well, although I hardly ever find it. It is Veronica Beard. I paid seven fifty for this. Actually, I think I might have gotten this one. This might have come from a death pile buyout or somebody that has been sourcing for us. I'm pretty sure it has. It's hard to keep track of. We have. Uh, so many buying options going on, um, but I'm pretty sure this this is where that came from. So I paid seven fifty for it. It was called the Venice Paisley tie waist dress, and we listed it for sixty dollars. It sold for our full asking price. This is a brand that, regardless of sell through rate, I would probably get because I'm willing to wait for the right buyer. It always sells for a good price, and they make some really high quality pieces. This is a wintry item and something I'll be on the lookout for. And just a category I've been sharing a lot of, um, which are blazers in both men's and women's. Here is another blazer sale. This is Brooks Brothers. Um, I love Brooks Brothers men's blazers for sure. I don't normally get the women's. I only got this one because it was a super thick wool. It had some kind of ornate button. So there was a lot of factor stacking involved. Plus it was a larger size. Paid about $5 for this. It sold for my full asking price of $45. So Brooks Brothers is definitely a brand um, to be on the lookout for. You just want to make sure to do your factor stacking. And this one was a very surprising sale. Um, I came across these at a thrift store. I picked them up for $7. They're just ASOS, which is a brand I like hardly ever get. Um, yeah, just not a brand I normally get. And these had a chunky uh, platform heel and they just had a very like Y2K vibes to them. And I went back and forth. I actually like picked them up three times and put them back. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to check the comps on these. And so I think I searched like ASOS chunky boots or something like that. And I was really surprised at the sell through rate and the comps had a great sell through rate. Comps look good. Picked them up, listed them for about 40 because they did have a little bit of wear to them. They sold very quickly for my full asking price. Um, and they were also a size 12, which is very high for uh, women's sizing. So I don't know if that helped to sell it or hindered it, but either way, they sold very quickly. Next up is a Madewell piece. I do like still showing brands like Madewell, Free People Anthropology, because a lot of people have stopped picking up uh, most things in those brands just because the market is really flooded with, you know, a couple years ago, that was all three of those were bolos. <laughs> and so everybody picked them up. Everybody listed them. Now the market's kind of flooded. So I'm a lot more picky, but there are still some things that sell really well within all three of those brands. This being one of them, it is a maxi link dress. So made well. Uh, I looked up the style name. It was called the Lakeshore button back maxi dress. And hard to tell because it's all black, but here's the back. Uh, lots of good factor stacking. It was also a size large. Paid five for it, listed it for 45. It sold for our full asking price. And pretty much all midi to maxi link dresses and all three of those brands perform really well for me. This is a men's wear or yeah, a men's jeans wear brand that does really well. It's Mugsy, has pretty good sell through rate. These are called the Softies. And I can't get like a ton for them, but they are pretty solid between 30 and $40, depending on the uh, style. And the size. I paid $8.99 for these, listed them for $40. They sold for our full asking price. This is a skirt from Lauren Ralph Lauren. It's a silk blend, longer length skirt, and we found it new with tags, so that definitely helped to increase the value. I don't pick up a lot of skirts, but this is one brand I've noticed, as long as it's longer length, can perform pretty well um, in the skirts section. Paid six for it. We listed it for 50. It sold on an offer to watcher for $42.
This is a Log and Look brand I really like, and specifically their linen stuff is like what they're known for. I don't know how well this brand will perform as we move into fall and winter, but for me, it's still selling right now. It is Bryn Walker. It's a brand made in the USA, and their sizing is always underneath of their brand label. In case you have something and you think you can't determine the size, it's their size is a little bit hidden. So this was a 100% women size small, very log and looky kind of cowl asymmetric tunic top. We paid 10 for this and listed it for 40 and it sold for our full asking price. This one actually went on an international sale. Next up is a kid's item. I've talked about this a lot, um, but I wanted to reintroduce this idea to you that there are some items in the kids section that are worth getting in fall and winter. And basically what I do is I just glance the kids section. Like I don't go through everything. I just glance over and see if there are any like thick looking puffer jackets. If there are, I check the brand. The brands that are typically good in adult sizes are going to be the brands that are also good in kids. So North Face is definitely one of those brands. Patagonia, you find something like that. Um, even some other ones like REI might be good, uh, depending, but definitely North Face. This is a boys reversible jacket, uh, puffer coat. The reversible ones for me and kids do really well in this brand. And usually the kid stuff is not priced up, which is awesome. So I only paid $3.99 for this, listed it for $40. It sold for my full asking price. This is another Lauren Ralph Lauren piece, and it's also another blazer. This was a women's size 12 linen blazer. Linen definitely adds a lot of value in the category of blazers I've learned. And so lots of stuff going for this one. You can tell it's kind of an older style because it's got the three buttons, um, but enough factor stacking that I think it's pretty good. This one had a few spots, so we listed it for 40. It did sell for our full asking price. All right, I had a lot of talk in the thrift haul where I showed this brand. It is Eileen West. This stuff retails for quite a bit and can resell for a lot. Um, based on the comps for similar items that I saw, I listed mine for $45. It is a two-piece set. It's got like a lace overlay and then um, a little like cami slip dress underneath. Um, $45 I thought was really good. I was told by some people I could have priced a lot higher, but that's where I felt comfortable at based on what I saw selling. Um, like I said, in similar items, paid five bucks for this. It sold for my full asking price of 45, but definitely a brand I would look for in the sleepwear section. This is a brand I will be on the lookout for for fall and winter. It is Pendleton. This one is an older label, but it was a size 2X. It was a wool blend and it had some print to it. Women's wool vest. And so lots of factor stacking. The thing about this brand is you can't just pick things up anymore just because they're wool and that's what the brand's known for. You do have to do, in my opinion, some factor stacking. And usually I'm looking for, you know, something a little extra, like a print, hopefully Aztec or Western-y print, um, or like a cable knit or something like that. Um, otherwise, I find that plain stuff tends to sit um, unless, like I said, I do a lot of factor stacking. So this one had some good stuff going for it. Uh, we picked this up for five bucks and I listed it towards the beginning of summer. So I've since dropped the price. It ended up selling for around $36. I think if I would pick this up now and list it, I probably could get a lot more for it, but I'll be on the hunt for pieces like this. Here's a vintage Levi's item. This is Levi's Strauss and Co. Two horse brand overalls, um, size small. I guess they're short alls, not overalls. Even had the little patch on the back. Um, I looked these up and was kind of cautious about getting them, about getting anything shorts because we are moving out of warmer weather, but I saw pretty good comps. So I paid five bucks for them, listed them for 35. They sold on, on an offer to watch her for 30 bucks. All right, this is a newer brand to me and one I'm gonna be on the lookout uh, for from now on. It is Marnie, M-A-R-N-I. 
These are a pair of women's uh, trousers, kind of wide leg and belted. Pretty good comps with this. Um, I paid 10. I listed it for 35. It did sell for full asking price. There are some other pieces in this brand that perform a lot better uh, than this one, but definitely a designer brand I'd be on the hunt for. All right, I picked up some good American jeans in a video and a lot of people told me this brand is sitting now. I'm still having pretty good luck with it. I think it does depend on the, the size, the style, and then what you price it for. Um, so I, you know, I've been selling quite a bit of these, but I think I am going to start being a little bit more cautious uh, with specifically the styles that I pick up. These were the Good Legs style. They were distressed. They were size 14, which I think helped to sell them. I paid $7.50 for them. They sold for my full asking price of $35. This is a completely unbranded, no tags, handmade crochet dress. And I just thought this was a very one of a kind, really stunning piece. So I took a chance on this. I actually got this uh, from Trash Pandas Wholesale. She has a really good eye for like vintage, really on trend pieces. And so we get sent a lot of style based options. And I usually pass on quite a few of them. I just like to have data behind stuff. Uh, but this is one I could not pass on because it was just so pretty and really interesting. And it, if you guys could hold it, it is like the thickest knit ever. Like you could tell it's very high quality. Uh, we listed this for 35 It did sell for our full asking price. And like I said, completely unbranded, completely a style-based pickup, and it still sold really well. Here's another vintage item. This one does have brand tag. This is a vintage butterfly women's t-shirt. Uh, it was dated 1999 and yeah, I just thought it was really cute. It did have a couple of issues with it. it had some staining. I paid $350 listed for $35. I usually list my vintage uh, t-shirts if I can't find like very similar comps for the brand, the dating, um, stuff like that. I'll just list it for around $35 is usually my safe space and it did sell for my full asking price. Here's another vintage item. This one was also unbranded, um, but it did have like some union made labels on the inside. And this is a category we sell a lot of. It is like long length slip dresses. This became pretty trendy. Um, I don't even know why it became trendy, to be honest with you. Um, but this one was very cottage core. These long slip dresses have been performing really well for me for a while now. Um, so I keep my eye out for them regardless of brand if they are vintage. I paid about five bucks for this, listed for 35. It did sell for my full asking price. Last item on eBay before we jump on over to Poshmark. This is a brand I would look for in plus sizes. It is Bob Mackie. This is a 2X silk women's top and it had a lot of factor stacking um, besides the large size. And so I listed it pretty high because of that. Uh, this actually ended up selling in a bundle. I probably sh should have pulled the other item to show you but we listed it for 40. It ended up selling on the bundle discount on eBay for about $35. So happy with that sale. And yeah, definitely a brand I would keep your eye out for in plus sizes. Moving on to Poshmark. I did have some pretty good full price sales on Poshmark. Um, this one is a Chico's Travelers pair of slinky pants. This is kind of bread and butter for us. I try to stick to the larger sizes. This is a size two in Chico's, which translates to a large wide leg. This one went for a little bit more because I think it had like multicolor striping. When I get the plain ones, they usually only sell for like 20 to 25. Anything extra above that usually goes for closer to 30. So happy with that sale. This is Kate Spade. It is a color black dress, size 12. Took a chance on this because there's definitely not a 100% sell through rate on Kate Spade dresses anymore. Um, but I did some factor stacking and I thought it would be worth it. Paid five bucks for this listed it originally for 55 on Poshmark and someone offered 45, which I accepted. 
Here is one of the AYR jeans that are left. If you didn't know, I came across like a handful of these jeans all at one thrift store. This is a fantastic brand to get in just about anything. I was really excited to find the jeans. They were all pretty much like, I think all of them were really small sizes. This is only a size 26 waist, which is very small, uh, but still really great sell through rate. So these are called the bomb pop jeans. These are size 26, um, and they sold for $70. Crazy. Uh, so definitely anything in this brand. They make some tops that also perform really well. This is a torrid item, and um, just overalls in general, I always look up regardless of brand because they add a lot of value. So torrid overall, size 18. This sold for $35 on Poshmark. And here's another blazer. This is a men's linen blazer. Remember, linen adds a lot of value in blazers, especially uh, in summertime. And this is a Lauren Ralph Lauren 46R men's linen blazer, and it sold for $51 on Poshmark. Like I'm telling you, you cannot beat the average sale prices of blazers. This is a new bra brand to me. I was really surprised by the comps on this. Great sell-through rate and a really decent uh, average sale price for pre-owned bras. So this is called Negative. And this is a size 2 in their sizing. It sold for $25 and it was just, you know, very lightweight, super easy to list. I love finding bra brands that do well. This is a good bread and butter athletic wear brand for me. I actually sold two items in this brand. It is Built, B-Y-L-T. This is like what they're known for, their drop cut shirts. This is a size large. I can usually only get like 20 to 30 for them, but like I said, they sell super quickly. So I usually list them in the middle at 25. I listed this one at 25. It, uh, I was sent offers to Likers and it sold for 22, so... Again, bread and butter, but pretty good. Here's another one. This one went for 20. Uh, this is pretty much the exact same thing. I accepted an offer of 20 on it. This is another Ralph Lauren skirt. This is a vintage denim skirt in a size eight. Um, vintage denim skirts in general, regardless of brand, if they're longer length, seem to be like going for tons of money lately. I don't know why, but I've been able to sell quite a few of them, and Ralph Lauren's definitely a good brand to look for within that category. Uh, we originally listed this on Poshmark for $85, and I accepted an offer of $75. Here's another pair of Good American. <clears throat> this one's also a larger size, 14 to 18, so I would say that uh, I'll be looking for probably strictly larger sizes in this brand from now on, unless I find a really specific style that is performing well. <clears throat> These ones were called the Always Fits Good Legs. Um, so apparently they make jeans that expand and stretch between sizes, which is why you're seeing a size range. And that is normal for this brand. Paid five for these. We listed for 50. They sold for 40 on Posh. Here's another pair of those Chico's Slinky Pants. These are also a size two and they are the Traveler's line. And these went for $22. Like I said, between 20 and 30 is usually what I can get for these. And I am happy with that. They are really easy to list at this point. I think I could list this with my eyes closed. We've listed so many of them. Next up is a Lululemon piece. This is a men's. Um, I'm also very cautious with this brand, but pretty much anything men's, in this brand, I still pick up. Um, they perform really well. This is a men's extra small polo. It went for $35 on Posh. This is a brand that is newer to me. Um, I just, I don't know. I've been like made aware of it recently and have been testing out some items and it's actually been performing pretty decently. I think it really depends on the piece. Um, they do have style names, so I've been uh, diligent in looking those up with the size. I have found that they perform better on Poshmark versus eBay. So I'm doing a lot of my comps for this brand on Poshmark now. It is Draper James. This is a size extra small. It's a really gorgeous dress. It is called the Kelly Baby Doll Dress. It's very like cottagey, peasanty, boho. Um, paid five bucks for this one. It went for $34 on Posh. 
Next up is another blazer. It's actually a blazer set. I found this all together. It is a J. Crew women's, I think the style name was called Lady uh, jacket and skirt set. It was tweed. It was a matching size 10. Um, and J. Crew sets like this for women like perform really, really well. So I'd keep your eye out for it. Um, I picked both of these up as a set for $7.99, listed them for about $100 on Poshmark and accepted an offer very quickly for $89. Crazy good money in the office wear stuff if you know what to look for. Here's another Lululemon piece. These are the women's dance studio pants. I've sold so many of these, so anytime I see them, I just get them. I know they're going to probably sell between 50 and 60. Like I said, I've just used a lot of them. This one didn't have a size tag, so we uh, determined sizing based on measurements. And they sold for $51, which is, again, about the range I can get for these. And last item is kind of a gothy brand. It is Killstar, which I would be on the lookout for, especially with Halloween coming up and... Um, yeah, just Halloween coming up. A lot of these like niche goth brands perform really, really well. So Killstar would be one of them. This is a lacy flare sleeve mini dress. Listed this one for around 45 on Poshmark, accepted an offer of 40 and was very happy with that. All right, guys, so that was it for what sold last week. I hope that you guys' sales are also drastically increasing as we move towards Q4. And if you're new, Q4 is the last quarter of the year, typically when sales increase for resellers because people are looking for gifts um, and they're just in the shopping mood because it's shopping season with the holidays. I do these videos every single week of what is selling for me in hopes that they might help you guys know what to look for while you are at your local thrift stores to flip online for a profit. So if you're interested in seeing these sales every single week, you can click the subscribe button down below as well as the notification bell and you'll be notified every single time that these videos go live. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.